Hello, friends, and welcome back to English Classes Online, where English learning is made easy. Kindly subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Like and share our videos and turn on the notification for more videos. English Classes Online is where English learning is made easy. English Classes Online is also where literature in English is made easy. English Classes Online is where we teach you how you can use the English language as a powerful tool for content creation. So we teach you how you can use the English language to create valuable content and create multiple streams of income on various online platforms. So you are most welcome to our channel. Rest assured that our classes are always informative, educative, and exciting. Let's dive into today's lesson right away. Today's lesson is designed to show you how to get A in WIAC English. This is our West African Senior School Certificate Examination 2023 English Preparatory Lesson. Come with me as we dive into the lesson right away. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the following. Number one, know the WIAC uh, English exam structure. Two, master the six sections of the objective test part. Three, master the three sections of the theory part. And uh, four, master the seven sections of the test of orals part. Now, this are the basic things that will enable you to get A in WIAC English. So let's begin to look at them one by one. Now, the first is the WIAC English exam structure. You need to understand the structure of the WIAC English exam and the structure is made up of three parts, three main parts. Part one is objective test questions, two theory questions, and three test of orals. Okay. Well, let's move this. Now, the objective test questions part is made up of six sections. Section one, antonyms. That's words most nearly opposite in meaning. Section two is collocation, words that best complete a given sentence. Section three is some sentence interpretation or sentence explanation, if you like. Section four is synonyms, words nearest in meaning. Section five is collocation, semantics, etc. And that has to do with words that best complete given sentences. And section six is register, words most suitable to fill the numbered gaps. Okay, so those are the specific uh, sections in the English language part one. Well, we are going to begin to look at them section by section. And at this juncture, I would like you to have the entire screen so that uh, there will be no, no distraction, and then you can see everything clearly. 
that I show you on the screen. We are illustrating with the West African Senior School Certificate Examination of June 2020, English Language 1, Objective Test Questions, Section 1. In each of the following sentences, there is one underlined word and one gap. From the list of words lettered A to D, choose the one that is most nearly opposite to the underlined word and that will at the same time correctly fill the gap in the sentence. So here you see in question one, a guest should not make derogatory remarks about his host, but dash statements. So the underlined word is derogatory. The first step is for you to understand the meaning of the giving the underlined word. Derogatory means disrespectful, belittling, slighting, rude, nasty, abusive, or demeaning. In other words, is you know, negative remarks, if you like. And then the opposite is complimentary or appreciative, all right? So this is how you pick the, the word that is most nearly opposite to the underlined word. And then you will check whether the, the opposite word you have chosen will collocate with the word it's modifies derogatory re remarks can we have complimentary remarks yes so this is how you check to ensure that the word can replace it okay uh, in the in the gap so let's now move to section two from the words lettered a to d choose the word that best completes each of the following sentences 11 the runner was dashed at 15 seconds at the end of the race. A, taped, B, timed, C, belled, D, neutralized. So here you see the correct option is timed. Runners, you know, in a sporting competition are usually timed, okay? Section three. In each of the following sentences, a list of possible interpretations is given. Choose the interpretation that is most appropriate for each sentence. All right. So this is sentence interpretation. You need to understand the how to uh, how to decode, if you like, or figure out the meaning of the idiomatic expressions. I have videos uploaded. If you search. If you browse through the channel, you will find sentence explanation or sentence interpretation lesson, video lessons, okay? Now, my grandmother once told me that old habits die hard. You need to understand what it means, old habits die hard. You know, die hard means very hard to die. They don't die easily. So once you understand the meaning and then uh, habits, this is a kind of uh, personification because uh, habits are not human beings to die. So it means that this refers to maybe changing habits or stopping bad habits that you want to stop, very difficult to stop or to change. So that is just what it means. This means that old habits are A, easily corrected, B, difficult to change, C, short-lived, D, forever changing. The correct option is B, difficult to change. Okay, so uh, section four, from the words lettered A to D below each of the following sentences, choose the word or group of words that is nearest in meaning to the underlying word as it is used in the, in the sentence. So now here we have words nearest the meaning that is synonyms. The other time we saw antonyms, words nearly opposite in meaning. Question 31, the boy was reluctant to carry out the order of his senior. Now the word underlined is reluctant. First, figure out the meaning. Reluctant means unwilling. You, when you are not willing to do something, you are reluctant about it. So option A, adamant, B, slow, C, sluggish, 
the unwilling. Unwilling is the correct option because reluctant means unwilling, okay? Section five, from the words letter A to D, choose the word or group of words that best complete each of the following sentences. 41, the soldiers lay dash to the town to arrest the terrorists. A, siege on, B, siege to, C, siege with, D, siege by. This is collocation, you know, certain uh, adjectives and verbs collocate with certain prepositions. So, but lay siege always collocates with two. You lay siege to a town, and that means soldiers surround the town, either with a view to attacking the town, or as this one is uh, constructed here, to arrest the terrorists, okay? Section six. In the following passage, the numbered gaps indicate missing words. Against each number in the list below the passage, four options are given in columns lettered A to D. Choose the word that is the most suitable to fill the numbered gaps in the passage. This is a register, okay? Hardly a day passes without news of terrible accidents on our roads. Most of the time, these are caused by ignorance, by the ignorance and dash of the drivers. So this has to do with uh, the words associated with road transport or road traffic accidents, okay? And uh, let's look at the option, option A, for forgetfulness, B, carelessness, C, wickedness, D, doubtfulness. The, the correct option is carelessness because when talking about road accident or uh, road transportation, you we talk about reckless driving. So carelessness is recklessness, okay? So factors that cause uh, accidents are mentioned here. One is ignorance of the drivers. The other one is carelessness. So that is uh, about register. Register it has to do with the choice of words, putting proper words in proper places in every field of life or in every field of study or activity there is a, a language or there are words that are associated with that field now this brings us to english language two and that is theory questions and is made up of section uh, three sections the theory questions part is made up of three sections, section A, essay writing, section B, comprehension, and section C, summary writing. Now, I, I, I want to add or emphasize here that if you want to make A in white English, you need to concentrate more in practicing how to write an essay, how to answer comprehension questions, how to answer summary writing questions. Of course, I have videos that cover all these sections, just as I have videos also that cover all the six sections in the objective part. All you need to do is to browse through this channel uh, using the playlists, all right? And then you'll be able to find all the videos. For example, essay writing or writing skills playlist will show you all the essay writing video lessons. Uh, comprehension or reading comprehension playlist will contain all the topics and then you, you look for summary writing and see various video lessons, okay? But let's go through this quickly. I want to show you exactly. We want to begin with the questions, okay? This is section A and in section A you are usually given five different essay writing questions and you have to pick only one and write on it. Now, if you are able to write a good essay, you are, you are going to do exceedingly well in your English exam because essay writing carries 50 marks. Just for writing one essay, if you do it exceedingly well, you will score uh, probably 40 or 40 something marks, okay? And that will give you a very, very, a fantastic lift, it will boost your chances of getting A. So let's go through the, 
the, the questions. Question one, your brother who is in the third year in another school has written to confide in you that he is about to stop schooling and go into business. Write to him, advising him against his decision. You need to find out what type of essay writing is this. This is letter writing. Then what type of letter writing? Because you are writing to somebody with whom you share a personal relationship, your brother. So this is informal letter, okay? Then two, write an article suitable for publication in a national newspaper on the topic, the importance of promoting good reading habits in students. This is article writing. Now, I have videos on all these various forms of writing. And once you check, uh, you, you browse through the playlist, writing skills playlist on this channel, you will be able to watch the various essay writing uh, video lessons. And once you learn the, the top, the keys, the, the, the procedure for writing a good essay, you are going to uh, make your A in WIAC English. Question three, as the senior prefect of your school, write a letter to the principal pointing out at least two practices among students that should be, that should be discouraged and two habits that should be promoted among teachers. This is a formal letter. Any letter you write to someone who occupies an official position is a formal letter. And you are writing to the principal of your school. So that's an official letter, is a formal letter. Four, a new principal has been posted to your school. Write a speech you will deliver at the welcome party organized for him informing him about some problems faced by students. This is speech writing for a special occasion. You will also find a video uh, on this channel that will show you step by step how to write such a speech. Question number five, write a story that ends with the statement, I had never felt so embarrassed in my life. You will again find the, some videos that will explain to you how to write a good story in the WIAC exam. Now, let me take you quickly through the writing process. Before you write, you need to pre-write. To pre-write means to plan your writing before you write. Now, there are three basic steps you must take in writing a good essay. Step one is pre-writing, step two is writing, and step three is rewriting. In pre-writing, you brainstorm, to generate ideas for your essay, then you create an outline. And an outline is a list of the main points you are going to discuss in your writing. Now, step two is writing. This is where you begin with the first feature of your writing. Uh, depending on the feature, if you are writing a letter, you begin with your own address, the writer's address. If you are writing an article, you begin with the title or headline and so on and so forth. Then ensure the three-part content, introduction, body, and conclusion. Now, I have uploaded a video on how to write, how best to write an essay on any topic. The, you will find detailed explanation of the writing process. Step three, rewriting. Edit your work before submitting your screen. This brings us to section B in the theory part of the white English exam, and that is comprehension. Now, question six in the was June, June 2020. Read the following passage carefully and answer the questions on it. This is the given passage. So you can look for, you can browse through the channel and find a, the videos I uploaded. Even this passage has been treated in one of my videos. So if you watch the video, you will uh, you will learn the steps as I discussed the steps. You know that you must take in order to answer the questions correctly. Now this is an example of the passage. My mother never thought it necessary to inform any of her children that she she would pay them a visit in Lagos at any time and so on and so forth. Okay, then you have 
these are some of the questions on the passage. Question A, why did the writer's mother never inform her children of her intention to visit them? B, how did mama while away the hours in the journey? C, state two difficulties mama faced when she arrived Lego. Now, one thing you need to do in a comprehension question is that you read the question first, and then you use the context clues to identify the specific points required to answer the question. What are the context clues? Look for the keywords contained in the particular question you want to answer. Now, if you, if you watch the video lesson on how to answer comprehension questions, I emphasize that the first step is to read the questions. Because re by reading the questions first, you, you gain some major benefits. Number one, you already know what the passage is about even before reading it. And number two, you already know what you are going to look for in the passage before you start reading. So when you start reading, it becomes very easy. All right. Now let's look at the, the, the question and we identify the context clue, which are the key words. Why did the writer's mother never inform her children of her intention to visit them? Now, the words in yellow here are the key words. Ne never inform her children of her intention to visit them. These are the key words. And so as you read the passage, you come to a point in the passage. You, you read this one. My mother never thought it necessary to inform any of her children that she would pay them a visit in Lagos at any time. This is the context clue. A clue is something that signals the the presence of another, of something you are looking for. You, you, you understand? Let's assume you are going, you are looking for a house on a, a particular street. Once you, you see a signboard uh, containing the street, that's, a, con that's a, a clue. Then as you look through uh, the street, you find a house with the number or a number close to the one given to you that's a clue that you are getting closer so in reading a passage you look for the keywords contained in the question and those are your context clues once you have seen this particular one that contains the keywords then you know that you are close to the answer and immediately after this what comes next is this after all no child would refuse her entry into their home. This is the answer you are looking for. Why did the writer's mother never inform her children of her intention to visit them? So in the passage, you find that my mother never thought it necessary to inform any of her children that she would pay them a visit in Lagos at any time. Then the next question is why? Now the answer is here, after all, no child would refuse her entry into their home. You see, this is the answer. Okay, so this is how you, you answer comprehension questions. And then there are different types of comprehension questions. And each type of comprehension question requires a different approach. You have factual questions, inferential questions, grammatical questions, figures of speech questions, and vocabulary questions. You know, if you check the, uh, the comprehension playlist on this channel, you will find uh, one of the video lessons titled Five uh, Types of Comprehension Questions and How to Answer Them. Okay, that will be of great help to you. This brings us to section C, Summary. And then we have question seven. Read the following passage carefully and answer the questions on it. Okay, this is the passage, and these are the questions. Okay, in three sentences, one for each state, three benefits derived from forest. In three sentences, one for each state, three measures to control deforestation. Once you read the questions first, you already know what the passage is about. You look for a video on summary writing and learn the procedure uh, in greater detail. Now, when you read the question first, then you find the context clue. You use the context clue to identify the points required in the questions. 
what are the context clues? Look for the keywords contained in the summary questions, similar to what we discussed in the comprehension uh, section. Now, for example, question A, in three sentences, one for each, state three benefits derived from forest. You see the words in, 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 in deep yellow here, benefits derived from forest. These are the keywords. So when reading the passage, you are looking for this. Then in the second question, in three sentences, one for each, state three measures to control deforestation. Measures to control deforestation. These are the keywords and they are the context clues. And then in presenting your summary answers, you may or may not use a preamble. A preamble is an opening statement indicating the purpose of what follows. You will also find a video lesson that explains how to use uh, a preamble correctly in answering summary questions. You will also learn uh, the, the wrong ways of using preambles, which make most students lose marks. Now, this is an example of using a preamble. Three benefits derived from forests are, this is the preamble. I, forests protect lands against erosion. I, I, forests provide wood for producing paper. I, 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 forests provide food for human beings and animals. This is taken from West African Senior School Certificate Examination of June 2020, okay? Now we come to part three, which is test of orals. And this part is made up of seven sections. Section one, vowel sounds. Section two, consonant sound. Section three, rhymes. Section four, word stress. Please, we are not true with that. Section four, word stress. Section five, stress patterns. Section six, emphatic stress. And section seven, speech sounds and phonetic symbols. There are video lessons that show you how to answer questions on vowel sounds, on consonant sounds, on rhymes, on word stress, on stress patterns, on emphatic stress, on speech sounds and phonetic symbols. I have video lessons that show you in greater detail how to answer questions on each section. But let's just uh, have a quick overview of each section. Section one, from the words lettered A to D, choose the word that has the same vowel sound as the one represented by the letter or letters on the line. One, whom. You see the underlying letters are O, M, B, you know. Then first, identify the sound represented by letters. Whom, you have who. Then you test the options. A, book. B, fool. C, come. D, bum. Now, the correct option is B, fool, womb. All right? Question two, dead. The, the sound here is A, A. Then we look at the options. Option A, pet. B, wet. C, start. D, did. The correct option is B, where. This brings us to section two. From the words letter A to D, choose the word that has the same consonant sound or sounds as the one represented by the letter or letters on the line. Question 16, the given word is girl, and the letter underlined is is G representing the sound G or G, if you like. Now, once you identify the sound represented by the letter, then you go through the options and identify the word that contains the same consonant sound. A, badge. B, gist. C, bringing. D, examine. The correct option is D, examine examine you may not uh, you may not really uh, know but you see examine 
x is represented by two uh, x as a letter represents the sound g and z is a mean okay that is exactly the way it is okay so you have g examine so that is how we come about it i just wanted to explain that to you then question 17 the given word is height the letter underlined is h representing the sound h or ha all right option a house b a c honest d hour now the the, the 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 secret here is that options b c and d contains words in which h is silent you you find the letter h but that letter h is sound is silent it there is not pronounced it's only in a it is pronounced and that is house this is the correct option height house b is a C is honest, D is our. So you can see, uh, you will find various videos if you browse through the channel using uh, oral English playlist, you will find various video lessons uh, that discuss these various sections of test of orals. Section three. From the words lettered A to D, choose the word that rhymes with the given word. So this section is on rhyme. Rhyme is sameness of sound, where two words contain the same sound, the same vowel sound, especially in the end uh, syllable. Let's look at 31. The given word is sweet. Many people mispronounce this word. They pronounce it as you find in option B, which is suit. But this is sweet. The one S-U-I-T-E, the one that ends in E, is pronounced sweet. All right? Now, since we have, uh, we have been able to pronounce it, then we pronounce the options and identify the rhyme. A tries, B suit, C sweet, D sweat. The correct option is C sweet and sweet. Question 32 insight, insight. Okay. A inside, B disquiet, C excite, D sunrise. The rhyme is C excite. Inside ends in, in sight. Then excite also ends in sight. So you have sight in excite and you have sight in inside. Section four. In each of the following questions, the main or primary stress is indicated by writing the syllable on which it occurs in capital letters. This is uh, word stress or syllable stress. Question 36, the given word is overwhelming. Then you see A is, the stress is on the first syllable, overwhelming. B stress is on the second syllable, overwhelming or something like that. C, Stress is on the third syllable over well mean. D, stress is on the last syllable. The correct option is C over well mean. Now, even with your intuition, you'll be able to uh, identify the word with the correct stress. Again, there are video lessons you will find on this channel. Uh, that will give you detailed explanation on, on word stress or syllable stress. Section five, in the following options A to D, all the words except one have the same stress pattern. 
Identify the one with the different stress pattern and share your answer in the usual way. This section is on stress pattern. So we have to pronounce all the words and find the one with a different stress pattern. A and do, B, a go, C, unless, D, legal. You will find that options A, B, and C have the same stress pattern because they are all stressed on the first syllable. And do, A, go, and less. Then D is stressed on the first syllable, legal. So the answer is D, the one with a different stress pattern. This brings us to section C. In each of the following sentences, the word that received the emphatic stress is written in capital letters. From the questions lettered A to D, choose the one to which the given sentence is the appropriate answer. Now, 46, the given sentence is this. The man brought the newspaper. So here, something is omitted, and that is T brought, okay? Then option A, did the woman bring the newspaper? B, did the man bring the newspaper? C, did the man bring the magazine? D, did the man read the magazine? Now, when answering questions on emphatic stress, you need to first of all, find out what exactly is the emphasized word then you are going to look for you are going to look for the word that has that contrast with this because another name for emphatic stress is contrastive stress this is how it works you know when you say the man brought the newspaper and the emphasis is on brought it means that you know, there's a kind of suggestion that someone is trying to say that probably the man uh, gave out the newspaper or the man bought or sold the newspaper or the man read the newspaper or the man wrote the news, something different from, from brought. And this is the reason for emphasizing the word brought. So the man brought the newspaper. The correct answer here is D, did the man read the newspaper? This is the correct option because when you ask, ask this type of question, did the man read the newspaper? The answer is no, the man did not read the newspaper. Instead, the man brought the newspaper. So you can see how emphatic stress works because it is also known as contrastive stress. It is used in contrasting two ideas, okay? Someone is saying something and someone is saying, no, it's not that, it is this, okay? And this is our last section, and that is section seven, okay? From the words lettered A to D, choose the word that contains the sound represented by the given phonetic symbol, you know? A phonetic symbol is uh, a written sign that represents a particular speech sound. And you can find it in what is called the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. I have a video that you know, explains the IPA and explains the various phonetic symbols. So you can look uh, for that video uh, on the channel using the oral english playlist okay <laughs> question 51 the given phonetic symbol is i this is a diphthong i now once you have gotten the pronunciation then you you pronounce the four options and pick the one that contains the exact sound represented by the given phonetic symbol so let's do this quickly. A, re, B, ice, C, A, D, fuel. Now the correct option is B and that is ice. 
because it contains the sound represented by this phonetic symbol, and that sound is I, as in eyes. And this brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you actually, uh, if you put in practice all the ideas we have discussed in this lesson, then of course, you have greater chances of getting A in WIAC English, especially if you devote much of your time to practicing. You have all the videos on this, on this particular channel. All you need to do is to use the various playlists and then you click on a playlist if you are going to practice with uh, objective questions. That is part one look for the playlist and then you watch the various videos <clears throat> if you want to uh, practice and learn something about summary writing then click on the summary writing playlist and you see different questions the same thing with essay writing you click on the writing skills playlist and so on and so forth comprehension and the other sections you know once you are able to prepare for all the three major parts, as I showed you, in part one, you have the objective test. In part two, you have the theory questions. And in part three, you have the test of orals. And once you adequately prepare for all these various sections, then you are very, very much capable of uh, getting A in the WIAC English exam. So if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, kindly leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye for now and remain blessed. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video if you did kindly subscribe to this channel subscribe now as a way of giving us support for notification about new videos click on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video, like and share the video with your friends and relatives. This is very important. If you have any comments, leave your comments below. Any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you 